Hi, I'm Blair and welcome back to Cellar Notes. I'm really excited about today's show. We're moving from the wine cellar to the beer cooler. And to help us out, assistant manager from our Kenrick location is Tom. Tom, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. And you have a special guest with us as well. Yes, our special guest today is John Leinkugel. Glad you can make it here today. Great to see you thanks guys. Thanks for coming, thanks John. For, thanks for having me in the beer cooler. I'm glad we're out <laughs> of the wine cellar and into the beer cooler here at Lakeville. Sure thing. Uh, we'll just start off if you give us a little bit of background on the Finney's Brewery and a little background on yourself as well. Yeah, well, it depends on how much time we have. That's my standard joke. But, uh, you know, back in 1867, we were real fortunate to have a great, great grandfather named Jacob. He came over from Germany with his father, Matthias, settled just north of Madison, Wisconsin. J or Matthias had uh, five sons, taught him all the art of brewing. One stayed home in Sauk City, the other four went out throughout the state of Wisconsin. So at one time there were four different Kugel breweries in the state of Wisconsin. There was only one that survived past prohibition, and that was my great-great-grandfather's Jacob, built into that little hillside and uh, just 90 miles east of here, Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. And uh, 142, later, 142 years later, um, Jake, my brothers Jake, Dick, and myself um, are very lucky, quite, quite honestly, and proud to be involved in still the family beer business. Fifth generation we are, our dad is still alive, living over there in Chippewa Falls, 86 years old, he's the fourth generation, so uh, like I said, brothers Jake, Dick, and myself, John, very, very fortunate to be in this great industry, great beer business, dealing with people like you on a daily basis, trying to sell more lining kugels. So that's how lining kugels, a little brief history, and uh, you know, that's, that's where I'm at, the fifth generation. The sixth is up and coming. I had breakfast with the sixth uh, generation this morning. So over frosted flakes and some Liney's berry vice. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's wonderful, uh, that's a great legacy. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the difference between the two, I think, most popular styles in America right now, the ale and the lager? What are the differences yeah. between the two? You know, to, to keep it simple for most people, there really are only two styles of beer. They're either lager, and underneath lager, you have Pilsner-style beers, and then <clears throat> you have the ale category, or the ale, uh, the ales. And it really comes down to the difference in yeast, and that's really the brewer's secret. Um, there's a different yeast used for lager style beers and ale style beers. The lager yeast and, and lining kugels over in Chippewa Falls predominantly is, a, is predominantly a lager style brewery. Very old, traditional, Germanic ways of brewing. In fact, a lot of the brewery is gravity fed. It's done in the old world way from top to bottom. Um, so there's not a lot of pumping of the, of the beer in that brewery in Chippewa Falls. Nowadays, breweries are spread out uh, horizontally. Um, but, but back to the question of, of the differences, it comes down to yeast, uh, lining kugels and many of our beers that pe people are familiar with that hopefully buy them here at Lakeville, uh, Lakeville Liquors, um, are all lager beers, with the exception of a couple that I'll talk about. But the differences in, in the yeast and how that yeast is treated, lager yeast is uh, a yeast that's fermented cold. And that product, once it's done creating the alcohol in fermentation, that product is dropped down into a roux cellar or storage cellar. It's aged cold, and, that, and, and the purpose is, is to smooth that beer out. That's what the Germans liked. That's what the Germans brought to brewing. Whereas the English were all about the ales, and still are for the most part. Ales are fermented warm. They're fermented quickly. You know, fermentation is a cycle of about seven to 10 days. And most ales, once you're done fermenting, they're ready to go. Many of our brew pubs and uh, smaller breweries, that's what they brew, ales, because they don't have the tank space, the lagering tanks, the, the cold cellars to age that beer. Lager is a German word meaning to store. And that's what the Germans did with their beer. A great example of, of a lager that we brew is Kugel's Red. Uh, this is just a great Germanic lager beer brewed with 
five different barley malts, two of which are specially roasted caramel malts. And this beer is aged anywhere from four to five weeks after fermentation. So a true example of a, uh, of a great lager beer. Also, ale beers will be more uh, fruity in the aromatics. Uh, lagers tend to be a little sweeter, milder, but in an ale beer you're going to have more of a fruity, more aromatic, more of a nose. Uh, you'll certainly smell different hops in an ale, uh, but the ale yeast pr provides a lot of fruity bo bouquet to the beer. So, and ales are a little sharper to drink, where again, those lagers are much smoother to drink. We as American beer drinkers, for the most part, like lager beer, lager beer, pilsner beer. All the light beers that people drink in America are lager style beers. Well, let's move on to uh, wheat style beers. We know that that's probably one of the most popular beers, uh, styles of beer coming up today. Uh, maybe you can go into a little bit of the wheat style that you have in front of us here and go into depth on how that compares with ales and lagers. After my long uh, explanation of lagers and ales, I almost feel <laughs> like I need a break uh, in, in tasting one of these great beers. But, you know, Tom, you said something really interesting in that uh, the wheat beers, and we have four here today, and, and at Lonnie Kugels, we, we like to call it our wheat portfolio of honey, berry, sunset wheat, summer shandy. Um, but it's interesting that you ask the question you ask because this style of craft beer, the wheat beers, it's the fastest growing category or style in craft beer, uh, is wheat beers. They're, they're predominantly very, very drinkable, very crisp, clean, again, very drinkable, refreshing beers. And that's what we, as American beer drinkers, like. But what's unique about wheat beers, and you'll see it in the pours, and I'll explain some of the ingredient differ differences as well. One of my favorite beer glasses, by the way, is a true wheat beer glass. And uh, I like to pour my beer straight down the middle, give it that nice big head to break up all the bad CO2, or all the CO2, it's not bad. CO2 provides effervescence little life on the tongue, but uh, I like to pour my beer straight down the middle to break up that CO2. It allows you to drink a better tasting beer, a beer that isn't so filling. You're going to taste and smell more of what the master brewer wanted you to experience. You know, we were all taught back in college or in our, you know, youth when we were over 21 years of age. You know, you pour beer down the side of a glass, don't give it any head, otherwise you're cheated. That's really the wrong way to drink beer. This is the right way to drink beer. Don't be afraid of a little head. That's a good thing. It's profit for the bar owner, but it just looks better. That's a much better presentation than, well, even if you look at our Liney's Red, the head's flattened out a little bit. This certainly looks a lot more appetizing than this. But wheat beers. Honey Weiss is an example of a crystal Weizen, which means it's a filtered wheat, and we use a different malt. That's, pr that's really what it comes down to. You know, here's a pale brewer's malt right here, and uh, you can just see a little bit of the grain there. That's pale brewer's malt. We use that in all of our beers. And here, I'm going to let our viewers see the difference here. It's really a, a different type of kernel. And here is red wheat, red malted wheat. Totally different grain that imparts a different flavor, a different body to the beer. And again, I was telling you that wheat beers are crisper, lighter, drier, more drinkable. A lot of that is from the difference in the two, in the two wheats. While we still use a little malted barley in, our, in all of our wheat beers, they're predominantly malted wheat. And that imparts a, a different taste profile that I think is just, quite honestly, more drinkable and more refreshing than now, any other style out there. Let me ask you real quick. If, if it's not a wheat-based beer, what is the basis? Is it rice? Is it primarily barley? Is it something 
Yeah. Other than that? Great, great, great question, uh, Blair. Um, it, 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 you know, all beers should be, you know, there, there was a, a law in Germany, it's still there, the Reinsgebot, where um, it's a German purity law, and, and the beers were made with only four ingredients, malted barley, uh, water, malted barley, yeast, hops. Those four and those four ingredients only. Uh, we as American brewers have added adjuncts to beer. Some breweries use corn. We use a little bit of corn in some of our beers, but it's not the basis for the beers. Um, there's a brewery in St. Louis, Missouri, that uses a lot of rice as a adjunct, and it's just a different way to get your fermentable sugars. A lot of that, I think, occurred after uh, World War I, World War II, when we were rationed on right. so many things here in the United States that brewers had to find other forms of fermentable sugars. But all beers are predominantly malt, you know, based in that malted barley, which comes from the Red River Valley of North and South Dakota. This happens to be one of the caramel malts that we use in that great tasting Liney's Red Lager beer. It's also fun to uh, eat a little caramel malt. The brewmaster will do that to taste the freshness of caramel malt, but caramel malt tastes a lot like grape nut cereal. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. It reminds me of grape nut cereal. But, you know, there are beers from microbreweries and, uh, and other small breweries that use nothing but malt, hops, and yeast. And that, again, is the, that German purity law. We as a, Amer a lot of American breweries use what is called an adjunct. Uh, whether it's corn, rice, it can be other things that you can get your fermentable sugars from. Now are all of these beers available year round or is there some seasonals? Well, we do have well? some seasonals, Tom, and uh, I, I'm gonna pour one of the seasonals, but before I do that, I wanted to show our viewers uh, a different example of another wheat beer that we have available, and that is Kugel Sunset Wheat. What's, and, and I, and I wanna show you this just because the, the examples of <clears throat> what a wheat beer can be. Boy, you can hear, our viewers probably couldn't hear that on TV, but we could hear that nice frothy sound coming out of the bottle. I'll tilt the glass a little bit. This, this bottle has a little bit more CO2 in it. We'll let, we'll let that head dissipate. But this is Lining Kugel Sunset Wheat. The Belgian, this is brewed in the Belgian Witt style of brewing. And, and again, we'll let that head go away. I think you can see the difference already it's, yeah. uh, in the clarity and the color. Yep, the Sunset Wheat brewed in the Belgian Witt style of brewing. This happens to be this style of wheat beer and you guys know this uh, here at Lakeville Liquors happens to be one of the fastest growing style of wheat beers is the Belgian whites. And you know that head starting to dissipate a little bit, but they're brewed with orange peel, spiced with a little coriander. They're really unique beers. There's a, they're, they're very complex beers, but they're very easy to drink. And again, they're very refreshing. So that's Lining Kugel Sunset Wheat. A lot of times with wheat beers too, we like to garnish them. You know, a honey wheat uh, or even a Hefeweizen, which is a cloudy, yeasty wheat beer, uh, really from Germany. Some great examples out there are Paul Lander, uh, Hockershore. Lining Kugel's brewed one back in the late 90s, but it was draft only. It wasn't available in bottles. And, um, you know, we're always looking into the future. Maybe we'll bring that back and bottle it. But our crystal vice and honey vice, we garnish with a, with a lemon. And sunset wheat, that orange citrusy character of a Belgian wit, uh, spiced with coriander, we like to garnish with the orange. So just different way to make beer fun, not to mention more appetizing looking. Absolutely. And then, sorry Tom, you asked about seasonal beers, correct? Yes. Yes, and, and one of our, and probably not one of our, but the most successful seasonal we have or we brought out last summer it's back again this summer i hope you guys are selling a lot We've of got it, it. <laughs> um 
but that's Lining Kugel's Summer Shandy. Again, now, another wheat-based beer. But lemonade is also added to it, is it not? Oh, and you can smell it just as I you poured it. Can. Um, but this, this Summer Shandy is a beer that is flavored with lemonade, a wheat beer flavored or mixed with lemonade. And in all honesty, the Germans would call that a Radler, R-A-D-L-E-R. I think my brothers, my two older brothers, being the brain trust at the brewery that they are, they loved the way shandy sounded, summer shandy. So we called this a shandy. It's not totally true to style in that a shandy from England, which is where shandy is from, is beer flavored with a white soda, 7-Up or Sprite or even orange juice. That's a true definition of a shandy. But a shandy in the world of lining kugels can be anything you want it to be. And we like it, that wheat beer mixed with a little lemonade. And uh, it's become our fastest growing and our best selling seasonal beer we've ever introduced. And this is one example of, of the seasonal um, offerings that, that come from Lining Kugel. What are some of the other seasonal offerings you have? Do you have an Oktoberfest or a Bach beer or anything we, along those we lines? We do. And uh, I know one of our fine uh, camera operators this morning absolutely loves uh, Lining Kugel's <laughs> Oktoberfest. And that'll be back out after summer shandy season is over with at the end of August. September, October, we have a great Oktoberfest. And, uh, you know, I, I think you may ask me a question later about what we have new, but uh, I know a lot of the drinker, beer drinkers here in the Twin Cities uh, re recall and remember apple spice and how much fun we had uh, introducing a beer with apple and cinnamon, but that was a holiday seasonal, November, December, and then in those late winter months and early spring months, January through March, we have always had traditionally a Bach beer you know, a real heavy Germanic malty Bach beer. So those are some of the seasonal beers we uh, currently have available. As long as you uh, let the cat out of the bag, why don't you fill us in? What is coming up from Lining Kugels? What can we look forward to in the near future? Well, Blair, I let you ask the question, so I didn't <laughs> steal your thunder. But uh, right now, uh, Brother Dick is, uh, as Jake and I like to say, in his basement working on our next seasonal which will take the place of apple spice. Uh, apple spice will not be back out this year in uh, November, December. It's going to be a new nut brown style of beer. Uh, I've had two versions that we currently brewed, and I really liked one more than the other. We got some work to do on it, but I know that our master brewers are certainly more than up to the task of getting this style uh, perfect and right on, and uh, it's pretty exciting that uh, we're working on a nut brown style, uh, perfect for uh, the holiday season, November, December. So we're always working on something new and uh, at Lining Kugels. And, I, and we also came up with something new that many of the viewers probably don't know about. And I thought it would be fun to at least talk about it and show it today. And that's not on the counter. That's hidden under the counter. <laughs> but so many Lining Kugel fans and drinkers um, and, and just beer aficionados that shop here at Lakeville Liquor uh, want to know, you know, what, what is new, what's out there, what's coming, what's coming from Lining Kugels. A year ago, we introduced a brand called Big Eddie, and the first Big Eddie beer was a true imperial IPA, a beer that had so much hop in it, it was overly hopped on purpose. You could smell the hop aromatics. Uh, the pine, the grapefruit from across the room. You really could. <laughs> Just a wonderful beer. Um, hopped seven different times that Imperial IPA was. Wow. Um, the second flavor we came out with this past uh, winter and spring was this Russian Imperial Stout. And we bottled this one. And uh, I hope when we can get the hops again to brew this beer, uh, due to the hop shortage that many beer drinkers know about, we can no longer brew this beer, or we can't brew it right now. In fact, uh, my, me, myself, John Lonningfogel, I only have four bottles of it. Uh, and I thought I would give one for you guys to uh, share and experience after we get done uh, doing our, uh, our informational, educational show here in the beer cooler. But this Russian Imperial Stout, uh, I'm not going to pour it, but just really uh, what we would call a big beer and really something very unique. Uh, this, this Russian Imperial Stout 
uh, it pours black. You can't see through it. Even the head is has a caramely color to it. Does it have any carbonation at all? Oh yeah, there, yeah. There's some carbonization. Anytime we bottle or keg something, uh, there there's some carbonization to it, and you'll see that when you pour that. But this is a style. Th these are uh, a, a brand name of beer, Big Eddie, and a style of beer, big styles, big extreme beers, they're called, that we're working on at Lion and Kogels. So this is, this is a style of beer that, that you guys are experimenting with and working with and, and bottling in limited quantities right now. Unfortunately, it's not available in this area. Mm -hmm. But maybe if the hops market comes around, we can, uh, you can continue to develop something like this, and, and we can see something like that in the future. Um, yeah. John, I want to thank you so much for Thanks, being with Claire. us today in the, my pleasure. the beer cooler. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Thank you Appreciate for being with you us. Me here. Thanks, Mark. And thank you all for being with us thank again you. on Cellar Notes.